All right, in this video, I want to start looking at the notion of homogeneous systems of linear equations. And we're going to talk about what are called trivial and non-trivial solutions. So um, in this video, we're going to look at a couple examples that have trivial solutions. And then in a separate video, we'll do an example that has non-trivial solutions, just because uh, the row reduction can take a little bit of time. So um, OK, so I guess let's just start off with a little, little definition here. So we say a system of linear equations is homogeneous if it's of the form. Um, so we've got some coefficients, the a sub 1, 1 times the variable x sub 1 plus a sub 1, 2 times the variable x sub 2 plus dot, 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 a sub 1, n times the variable x sub n equals 0. And you can, you know, this is kind of our first row and then our second row and then down to the mth row. Um, so basically, we just have a bunch of linear equations, uh, variables being multiplied by coefficients, real number coefficients. And again, it's homogeneous uh, if all the coefficients on the right side are zero. Okay, so that's what we're looking for, are the zeros on the right side. Uh, we can also write this as a little matrix uh, e equation. And we can write that by just taking the coefficients, uh, putting those in one matrix, multiplying that by uh, the vector x sub 1, x sub 2, down to x sub n. So we have our variables. And then we just set that equal to a bunch of zeros. So again, more shorthand, we can write this as uh, the matrix. This would be our matrix A times our vector x. And we want that to equal the zero vector. So that's the definition of a homogeneous system. So. Um, now, homogeneous systems can have, uh, again, what are called trivial or non-trivial solutions. And uh, one thing that happens is a, a homogeneous system always has at least one solution. So uh, the one solution is going to be the trivial solution. So let's look at this system, 5x plus 4y equals 0, 2x minus 2y equals 0. So the way I'm going to solve this is just by doing a little bit of uh, elimination by addition. So notice if we multiply the second equation by 2, we'll get 4x minus 4y equals 0. And if we add those equations together, so our elimination by addition, notice we'll get 9x. Well, the negative uh, 4y and positive 4y will cancel, so we'll get 9x equals 0. And that tells us simply, well, that x has to equal 0. And then if we go back and plug x equals 0 into either equation, uh, maybe the first one, We'll have 5 times 0 plus 4y equals 0. And hey, that says that 4y equals 0. And correspondingly, uh, y would have to equal 0. So notice the only solution in this case uh, is the point 0, 0. That is, the only solution are, is when both variables equal 0. And if both variables equal 0, that's what's known as the trivial solution. It's kind of boring because, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's obvious that if you plug 0 in for all the variables, well, everything's going to cancel out and you'll have a solution. Kind of a boring solution in a sense. One other thing to point out too, um, just a little geometry. You know, remember you could even graph these. These are certainly just lines. So you'd have 4y equals negative 5x. If we divide by uh, 4, we'll have negative 5 fourths x. Well, hey, if we graph this in a you know, slope-intercept form, the slope is negative. Notice the y-intercept is 0. So we just have a line going down. Um, the same thing if we graph our other line, 2x minus 2y equals 0. If we add uh, the 2y over, well, we'll just have 2x equals 2y, or equivalently, x equals y. And again, x equals y would just look like that line. So again, you can again. Uh, think about a lot of these systems in terms of geometry. So I think that's something that's important as well. Um, you know, certainly a little harder to graph the larger ones, but uh, would like to tie in some uh, geometry to some of these. I think it's just a, another way to think about them. So um, again, just to remind you of that, no big deal. Okay, so again, uh, a, the, a, a homogeneous system always has at least one solution, in this case, the trivial solution, zero, zero, nothing, nothing else other than that. Um, let's look at maybe one more example here that only has the trivial solution. So we have 1x sub 1 minus 2x sub 2 plus x sub 3 equals 0. 
6x sub 2 minus 3x sub 3 equals 0, and then 1x sub 1 minus 2x sub 2 minus uh, x sub 3 equals 0. Again, let's just show that this only has the trivial solution. So again, we could do our elimination by addition or substitution or however you want to do it. Um, I'm cert certainly going to start using some row reduction here. So I'm going to write my matrix with my coefficients. So we have 1, negative 2, positive 1, 0 on the right side. We have uh, 0 x sub 1, so we have positive 6 x sub 2s, minus 3 equals 0. And then we've got 1 x sub 1, minus 2 x sub 2, minus 1 x sub 3. And then we have 0, again, on the right side. So I'm going to do some row reduction here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, negative 1 times the first row, add that to my third row, and that's going to produce my new third row. I think one other thing I'm going to do here at the same time is um, I'm going to take my second row, and I think I'm going to just divide it by, by 3. So I'm going to take one third row 2, and that's going to give me my new row 2, just because I see that everything's divisible by 3, just to make the, uh, the numbers a little bit easier. So not really doing anything with the first row, so let me just jot... Uh, you know, jot those right back down. Well, if I take the second row and divide it by 3, I'll have 0. Uh, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. And then we have another 0. So now if we do our, our first little step here, so if I take negative 1 times 1, that'll be negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Let's see, uh, negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2, plus negative 2 again will give us 0. Uh, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus negative 1, that's going to give us negative 2. And again, uh, the, the zeros will all stay simply 0. Well, let's think about what this really says now. So again, we had our variables x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3. So the thing that's kind of cluing me into this trivial solution is this last row um, that I'm looking at here. So notice we could rewrite this as a system of equations. The first one simply says that 1x sub 1 minus 2x sub 2 plus x sub 3 equals 0. So basically what we started with. The second row says that 2x sub 2 minus 1x sub 3 equals 0. But the last row says that negative 2 times x sub 3 equals 0. Well, if that's true, notice we can take the last equation. If we solve for x sub 3, that's just going to tell us that x sub 3 equals 0. Well, now if we plug that back into the second equation, um, it's going to say that 2x sub 2 minus 0 equals 0. Well, for that to be true, it says that x sub 2 would also have to equal 0. And well, if we plug those back into the first equation, it says 1x sub 1 minus 0 plus 0 has to equal 0. So again, x sub 1 has to equal 0. So it, again, it says the only solution in this case is when all three variables equal 0. And again, that tells us we only have the trivial solution in this case. Okay, so again, kind of the thing that I'm looking for is this bottom row where I have all zeros except for one number that's not zero, okay? So kind of the thing to look for. So again, just a couple examples here of showing, uh, you know, s uh, systems of equations that have uh, the trivial solution only. Um, I'm not going to do this one in this video. Definitely going to do it in another one. Um, but we'll show a system here, a little bit larger, um, a slightly larger system that does have non-trivial solutions. And we'll show how to pick out some particular solutions for this system of equations.